Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this video, we are going to discuss about the stability of the system. An LTI system is said to be stable if it satisfies the following conditions. What are those conditions? If bounded input is applied, output must be bounded. So, what do you mean by the bounded output? That means its maximum and minimum value should be finite. So, if the maximum value of the system output or the response of the system is finite then we say that 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 system is stable so this is the first condition that if we apply the bounded input means finite input the output must be finite and secondly in the absence of the input output must be zero irrespective of the initial conditions so if there is no input of your system the output must be zero okay so the stability of your system depends upon the position of the poles so now we will see that how the position of the poles affect the response of your system or the stability of your system right so first of all let's assume that that we have the pole at s is equal to minus 1 sorry minus a so our pole is in the left half plane at the uh, real axis and is equal to minus a so if you uh, look at the impulse response of this system when there is a single pole at s is equal to minus a you will get this as the impulse response and here you can see that um, the system response is decaying it is finite so as the time is approaching there is the finite value of your response so it's the bounded output so when you have one single pole at the negative real axis your response is finite so your system is stable so we call that system as the stable system because we have the finite output bounded output of your system when we apply the impulse and why we are taking the impulse response because we've already seen that the impulse response gives us the information of the transfer function of the system because in s to mean the impulse is the uh, one this Laplace transformation of the impulse is 1. So if the 1 is the input and the GFS is the system, so the output will be equal to your transfer function. Right? So this is basically giving the information of your transfer function. Okay, now if we have the two poles at the uh, negative real axis overlapped at same position, right? So double pole at s is equal to minus a. So if you look at the impulse response of this system so impulse response will be given by this equation that is equal to t into e raised power minus a t and if we sketch that one so this equation uh, this response will be somewhat like this again it's the bounded response finite value is there this is not ever increasing value so it's a finite value so this system is also stable so when your poles are over here the response is like that and uh, the system is the stable system now if we have the two um, conjugate pair of the poles as you can see over here and if we take the impulse response when the poles are in the uh, left half plane and the conjugate pair so um, the pole position is this one minus a plus minus j b and this is a is the over along the real axis and the plus b along this j omega axis and minus b in this direction okay so to the position of the two poles one pole and the second pole this is s1 and this is s2 so if you look at the impulse response it is like that it is mm, having the oscillations and finally it is going to decay to the zero again it's finite right so it's a stable system because you have the bounded output when you have the poles complex conjugate poles in the left half plane now if we say that, uh, if we consider that these poles um, reach to the uh, imaginary axis, these are like that. One pole is over here and the second pole is over here. There is no real part. And if we look at the impulse response, so um, S plus minus JB, so impulse response will give us uh, uh, the response like that. We have the oscillatory system. Right, so still we have the bounded output that we have the finite maximum value and the finite minimum value of your system. But there is no one steady state value, it is oscillating be between these two limits, between these two boundaries. 
so there are the sustained oscillations in your system right and your system is said to be the marginally stable system because if there will be a slight change in that one these oscillations if these uh, keep on increasing um, if, if we change the position of the poles and we shift it to the left type plane you will see that the magnitude of the oscillations will start increasing and the system output will be unbounded then because there is no finite maximum in that case okay so um, in this case when the poles are at the imaginary axis um, then your system is marginally unstable now if we have the two pole pairs this pole is the repeated one two poles at the same position two set pairs two conjugate pairs and their position is this one s plus minus jb s1 is um, plus jb right and the second pole along with that that is also at the same position plus jb and similarly two poles at this position s2 um, one is at minus jb and the other one is also over here overlapped poles so in that case if we look at the impulse response so impulse response will be um, like that here the magnitude of the um, oscillations will be increasing so it is like that so what about this one now that is t sine of bt so if the time is increasing if the time becomes infinite so this is going to become infinite so as the time is increasing your output is increasing that is not bounded output <coughs> so uh, this is an unstable system because if you give the input so you are not going to get the bounded output it does not have the finite maximum value okay so your system is unstable when you have the repeated poles at the um, imaginary axis but if these poles are displaced and uh, one pole is over here and one pole is over here then the system will be marginally stable then there will be sustained oscillations if the overlapped poles are there poles are at the same position then it will be an unstable system because the magnitude will be increasing in the response okay now let's um, consider the case when we have the uh, pole at the origin so if we have one pole at the origin and if you look at the impulse response so impulse response is this one it's a fixed one k right so it's a bounded uh, um, response so your system is um, stable if you have the um, one pole at the uh, origin but if we have the repeated pole at the origin two poles at the origin so double pole at the origin and if you look at the response so that will be t so um, if we plot it uh, with the time response so uh, it will be increasing response and this is not finite it is increasing with time so it is an unstable system when you have the double pole um, at the origin now let's uh, consider the pole in the right half plane at the uh, real axis so if we have the pole over here one pole at s is equal to a and if you look at the impulse response so um, this will be like that e raised power l a t it's ever increasing so again it is an unstable mm, system right because we do not have the bounded output now if we have the repeated poles at um, real axis again uh, the impulse response is given by this equation and if you sketch that one so again it is um, ever increasing uh, output unbounded output so if you have the double pole at s is equal to a, a so again your system is unstable uh, if you have the complex conjugate pairs of the poles in the right half plane right so uh, the pole position is this one a plus minus jb this is the uh, positive um, real part so if you look at the impulse response so impulse response of the system is um, like this right and um, it is um, like this it is increasing right it is e raised power 80 plus 80 with the increase of the time it is increasing so we do not have the bounded output so this is an unstable system so what we can conclude from here that when the poles lie in the right half plane our system is unstable you can see either it's the conjugate pair or the repeated pole or it is the single pole there is unbounded output so your system is unstable so whenever our poles will lie in the right half plane we will say that our system is unstable because there will be the unbounded output of our system okay now if there are the repeated poles at j omega axis again our system is unstable and we have seen its example uh, over here here you can see the repeated poles so if we have the repeated poles our system will be unstable repeated poles at the j omega axis so whenever you have the repeated poles at the j omega axis the system is unstable 
okay so when we have the repeated poles at the origin and that was um, in this case that you can see over here when we have the repeated pole at the origin your response is like that ever increasing response uh, so again it is an unstable system right so when your poles are in the right half plane when there are the repeated poles at the j omega axis and the repeated pole at the origin your system will be unstable if your pole lie in the left half plane as we have discussed over here um, for different cases here you can see one pole at the negative real axis double pole at the negative real axis you have the bounded response and if you have the conjugate uh, um, pole pair so again you have the uh, stable system because bounded output is there so whenever you have the poles in the um, left half plane your system will be uh, stable right when the pole lies uh, when the poles lie on the j omega axis but not repeated then the system is marginally stable because then will be sustained oscillation but if the poles overlay overlap each other repeated poles at j omega axis then it will be unstable system because ever increasing oscillations <coughs> will be there in your system the poles which are close to the origin are uh, the dominant poles of your system because they affect the system response uh, more quickly as compared to the poles which are much away from the origin in the uh, left half plane as your pole move toward the origin the system can become unstable um, uh, with the small variation if that pole enters into the uh, right half plane so if it is very close to the origin then with respect to the stability um, the position of that pole is very critical because that can make the system unstable so we say that it's a dominant pole with respect to the a response because um, the position of that pole determines the response of your system um, majorly okay so the dominant pole is the one which is very close to the uh, origin of the uh, system uh, origin of your uh, s plane and um, how we define the bounded signal a signal having finite maximum and the minimum value is called the bounded signal so um, if your response is like that that you have the finite output uh, finite uh, response of your system then the system is the stable system over here you have the finite this one is finite this one is finite it, it is oscillating between two finite values so it is marginally stable why we are going to call it marginally stable because if there will be a slight change in the position of the poles then the system will become Mm, unstable okay so mm, if the poles are repeated you have unbounded output ever increasing there is no finite maximum minimum value it is ever increasing with the time so it is an unstable uh, system similarly this one is an unstable system unstable output unstable unbounded output and this one is unbounded out so if i summarize this video uh, we have seen that how the position of the poles is going to affect the response of your system and um, how the stability depends upon the position of the pole so if your poles are in the right half plane your system will be unstable and when your poles are in the left half plane your system will be stable and when your poles are at the imaginary axis over here um, over here at the imaginary axis then your system may or may not be stable so if there are the repeated poles it is an unstable system if there is, are the multiple poles it is conditionally uh, stable marginally stable so looking at the position of the poles you can look at the stability of your system that your system is going to give you the bounded output or not and that's all from this video thank you very much